Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast, brought to you by the Funny Womax and Friends. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, musicians, and comedians that perform here and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what makes our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Don Davis Womack. Hello, laughers. We are thrilled to share with you the Aviation Mechanic Program from Blue Ridge Community College. Established in 2007, their cutting-edge FAA-approved training program is designed to equip aspiring aviation maintenance professionals with the necessary skills and knowledge required to meet the demands of the aviation and aerospace industry. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the aviation industry will need to fill 12,000 aircraft mechanic positions annually to keep pace with the demand. Their program is here to help. Their graduates work in various avenues in the aviation maintenance and aerospace industry, including companies like American Airlines and SpaceX. They are an accredited program that provides a clear pathway to success that includes affordable tuition, small class sizes, cutting edge training equipment, and strong industry connections. They offer one year, two year certificate programs and distance learning, offering professional instruction and delivering high quality training. Today we have special guest Kevin Campbell, an instructor and the program manager, along with Ethan Shank, a second year student, here to tell us all about it. Welcome to the show, Kevin and Ethan. It's great to have you both on today. It's great to be here. Thank you, Dawn. Yes, well, let's have Ethan say it's great to be on here today. <laughs> it's great to be on. Thank you. <laughs> We're sharing the mics today and having fun. We're actually, they just got a new class cohort started this week. And I was here a couple of days ago taking some B-roll, which you saw during the introduction of this new cohort. And they spend the morning in the classroom space and then the afternoon doing hands-on training, which you're going to see happening right behind us. So you are getting a behind-the-scenes look at this program right now, Laughers. And I can't be more thrilled to share this with you. I had no idea, you two, that we had such a serious shortage of airplane mechanics. It's big time. So I do want to talk about that in just a moment, but first I think it would be a great time to introduce the laughers to each of you. If both of you could give just a little bit of background about yourself and how you got to become the program manager here. And Ethan, what brought you to becoming a student? that is now in his second year in this program. So, Kevin, can you start out? Sure, yeah. Uh, So, a little bit about myself. I uh, have about uh, 20 years plus experience in this industry. Um, I've worked in GA aircraft for several years along with uh, large jet uh, transport aircraft. And um, I've been doing that for 20 years. And I've worked as a, a contractor for a while for that. Um, and uh, I am a FAA certified um, AMP, which is an airframe and power plant mechanic. Uh, I am also an IA, which stands for Inspection Authorization. Um, so I'm an inspector as well. Um, the way that I came into this program is um, a friend of mine called me up one day and said uh, that the gentleman that formed this program is retiring. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, this is a, a very uh, close subject to my heart. It's near and dear to me. And um, I did not want the program to go away. Mm. So I applied for the program uh, and I got the job. And um, I wanted to be a part of something, an industry that has been good to me and that has given me so much. And so I wanted to give back uh, in, to this industry. And um, here I am today. So I'm the program head. I've been here since October of uh um, 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been the program head since June of 2023, um, and it's been great. It's been a great ride, so I like it. It's That's fun. great. It's been great. Hey, laughers, Tisha here. You know what goes great with this podcast? Free popsters gourmet popcorn. We're so excited to sponsor this podcast, highlighting some of the most wonderful people in the Shenandoah Valley. To show our love for you, Laughers, we're giving you 15% off today at prepopsters.com. That's P-R-E-P-O-P-S-T-E-R-O-U-S dot com. 
Use promo code LAUGH15. So it's provided for you and you, you're at a place where you want to get back. Yeah, you know, this, um, what, what really brings me joy in this is I get mm-hmm. to share my experience and my, um, um, my career journey with all my students. And I get to, uh, my goal is to make them as good of a mechanic as I am, if not better. And so I want to share that with them and still that in that, you know, that um, if you work hard enough in this industry, then you can get far. And uh, with the market today in this industry, it is amazing of the things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And the sky's the limit, really. So, so yeah. So Okay. And how about you, Ethan? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what drew you to this program? Uh, So, I have uh, always been interested in aviation, loved airplanes growing up. Uh, My dad used to fly RC aircraft, built them and flew them, and I just remember being down in his shop, watched him work on them. And then my granddad, he had his pilot's license. Uh, He worked for Dynamic Aviation. Oh, wow. Um, Okay. So, got to ride with him a couple times, and actually right now I have, I fly his airplane that he used to fly. That's so, really neat. That's great. Yeah. Uh, what got me into this program, I got my pilot's license about two years ago, a little over two years ago, and I've always loved working on mechanical stuff, working on cars, just working on small engines, mm-hmm. stuff like that, and decided I wanted to take it to the next step, so I came over here to Blue Ridge College, and here I am. And here you are. And uh, In the intro, I talked about the Bureau of Labor Statistics saying we have a shortage of 12,000 airplane mechanics. I mean, has it always been that way? What a, You've been in this business for 20 years. Is there more airplanes? What, what is happening? Why do we have a shortage? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the answer, I mean, yes, there is more aircraft. Uh, there's yeah. more flights every day. Um, but, you know, with this type of industry, if you go back and look at the numbers also, there's roughly a little over 300 some thousand um, mechanics who works on aircraft in this country. But if you really dive deep into the numbers, that number is a lot less. So it's about 200 and some thousand actual FAA certified aircraft mechanics in this country. Um, with the workforce that's already so little and people retiring all the time, mm-hmm. um, you have to replace those people. And so, um, n- no, the, um, the industry has um, always needed us. But probably within the past five or six years, maybe not even that far ago, um, the need has increased greatly. Yeah. So with the um, with the onslaught of more flights and more aircraft and just, you know, just more companies forming, they just need people just to work on your aircraft. Um, so, and you have programs like us are here to help fill that void. And hopefully we can do a good job of doing that. It sounds like you are. I think yeah. it's a great time to ask, what is the overview of your program? Can you talk about that and what sets it apart from the other programs out there? So, um, one thing is affordability. So, Got it. Uh, we are very affordable compared to other programs. Uh, when you go into the Virginia Community College system, you pay in-state tuition rates and you also pay, even if you're out-of-state, it's still affordable. So, uh, you can come to a program like this for a lot less money than you can other programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of that, you know, you're getting the structure and you're getting the support of the community college system and the instructors that we employ. We have some of the best instructors in the world, in my opinion, and we have a lot of knowledge and experience that comes into this school with our instructors. Um, we take great pride in hiring some, you know, some of the best instructors that there is in the industry. Mm -hmm. So um, we try to do that as much as we can, and we bring people on board that can uh, help instruct our students and get them uh, into the industry and not only help them pass the FA exams well, but to get them a foundation going into the industry. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a busy, busy time here today it at the a AMP program, which is really great. What are some of the steps a student must take, Ethan, to achieve FAA certification as a mechanic? All right. So uh, as a student of this program, you need to, there is uh, every, there's a bunch of different uh, FAA manda- mandated classes that have to be taken. Uh, each of those classes has 
through this program, they do oral exams uh, for every class, so you get a good base on how that's going to go at the end of the, when you have to take the FAA final tests. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also written tests and practical tests, which involve working with your hands, doing specific tasks that uh, is required to be done. Um, as far as as far as the FAA certification goes, uh, at the end of this course, whether you're a one-year or two-year program, uh, you still have to take FAA mandated tests. Okay. And that involve that is uh, general tests, which is oral and practical, and written. Mm-hmm. So when a student completes the program, uh, well, first before they're eligible to complete the uh, to take the FAA exams, they have to complete the program here at BRCC, which includes all okay. of our oral exams and practicals and written exams that we have. Once they pass the programs and they're eligible to take the FAA exams, uh, and once they take the FAA exams and they pass the FAA exams, and they are they will become FAA certificated aircraft mechanics. Okay. So yeah. Is, do you feel, well, you haven't taken the test yet, right? Okay, but you are familiar with many students taking the test. Yes. I'm sure you've heard student, former students talk about it. Is it a very stressful test? Is this? They are very stressful. Oh, okay. But what's really unique about our program mm-hmm. compared to some other programs is we prepare our students heavily for the exams. So, you know, for example... We give an oral and written and practical after every class that we have, okay. which is multiple classes. And so right. the students are well prepared going into the FA exams with lots and lots of practice on the oral and practical things and written as well. Um, but not only that, our students go into the industry with a foundation mm-hmm. of, they go into the industry with a better foundation than they would otherwise. So, I got it. Yeah. Is it expensive? What's the ex- success rate? Um, so, our success rate is really high. We have over a ninety-four percent average success rate with the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of right now, as of last year, we are still at a one hundred percent success rate Yay. with the FAA. Yeah. So every one of our students that have taken the FAA exams have passed them. So we're at a one hundred percent pass rate with that. Um, so we have a really good. You know, here in this program, we have a great rate. Uh, as far as cost, mm-hmm. expense, uh, it's not that expensive. Uh, mm-hmm. Compared, and again, I'm not, you know, compared to other programs, it is very affordable. So currently right now, I do not know the current in-state tuition rate, but whatever the in-state and out-of-state tuition rates are for our school, mm-hmm. that's the price. I think it's about 170 some bucks a credit hour for in-state. Really, really affordable. So you can, you can actually do this program for under 20 grand. Uh, wow. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Yeah. What is the salary expectation for students that get into this field after they graduate? That is a very good question. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so right now, averaging yeah. our students are making anywhere from sixty to 75000 a year to start. Okay. The national mean average right now is around eighty two to eighty three grand. Okay. For new students out of school. Uh, you have companies right now that has raised their top out pays, raising pay and different things. And so they are attracting mechanics now. So it's a really, really good time. If you want to get in this industry, it's a really good time. Yeah. Mon- money talks and students are listening. That's right. That's true. That's, right. <laughs> That's true. What are some of the potential career paths and industries that the graduates can take once they complete this program? And Ethan, do you want to talk about maybe which direction you're going in as one of the possible career paths? Sure. So I'm coming to this class with the mindset that I'm, I'm looking for a job, a good paying job that I can get at a steady nine to five. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I'm looking at now is uh, there's a couple of options that are local mm-hmm. that I've been and talk to people the other option that i have been looking into is going to the mission field so as a pilot one of the requirements or one of the not necessarily requirements but one thing that they really like you to have in the mission field is your mechanic certificate because if you break down in the middle of nowhere you need to know how to fix your airplane 
Mm. The other thing, uh, as a pilot, it is very nice to know a lot more about the internal workings of an airplane. Mm. It's very helpful to, if you're flying along and something happens, you can easily, or you, you have a lot better of understanding of what is going on inside the airplane. I see. Yeah, that, I can see how that would be really helpful. Yes. It almost feels like they all the pilots should be mechanics and vice versa, but that's not really how it works, is it? <laughs> yeah, we need them both, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so what are some other career fields they can get into, Kevin, as they graduate from your program here? Well, there's actually a lot. Okay. Um, obviously, one of the main fields is working on aircraft. You can work in GA, which is a small aircraft, like 172s and stuff like that. That's the type of airplane you're yep. talking about. Yeah, like a small um, you know, four-seater aircraft. Uh, and then you can work in the large airlines. You can work for uh, uh, corporate aviation. Um, we we actually had a graduate last year, uh, graduated, and he's working for SpaceX, that's uh, pretty cool. So you can work in the aerospace side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of AMP mechanics who actually work for people like Walt Disney World. You know, Really? You, there absolutely is. What so, are they doing at Walt Disney World? Because, I love that place. <laughs> yeah, because you, know, you actually learn hydraulic systems, electrical systems, and stuff like that. Uh, so maybe not quite right out of school, but they do hire AMP mechanics at Walt Disney World. Uh, and, and plus, in addition to that, Walt Disney uh, or the uh, Disney company owns aircraft as well. So oh, they, that's true. They have yeah, people working on the aircraft. Um, but there is a wide area that you can go work in this industry. You know, uh, the majority of people actually do go work on aircraft, so that's what you're doing. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why you're coming to school to do that. You're an aircraft mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, how does your program balance the theoretical knowledge that they learn in the classroom with the hands-on training? Um, so. We spend a lot of time in the classroom on theory. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, right now, we're in a class called Aviation Science for Mechanics. And we cover everything from gas laws to temperature to aerodynamics. So there's a lot of theory in that because, obviously, there's not a lot of hands-on stuff you could do. And we do a lot of lab work in those items. And currently, we have people behind us doing some lab work in those we items do. right now. Um, so we, we have a lot of time in the classroom to talk about the knowledge of what we do. Um, we spend time going over a lot of information such as manuals and information on how to find regulations and all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, we do, you know, um, lots of hands-on work out here in the lab. Um, there's many times that we will bring hands-on projects into the classroom to show the students. Mm -hmm. um, we bring them to aircraft on the field to show them live items on live aircraft. Um, so there's a lot of things we do that um, you know that sheds light on everything and opens up an umbrella on every part of what we do in this area of maintenance so mm -hmm. um, our students uh, you know once they start getting into the spring and summer semesters they're doing a lot more hands-on items so we're here in the lab more often um, but they get a balance of both so, that's really good yeah, yeah you guys have this hands-on training but you were also telling me as a, we were getting ready for this podcast that you have some online learning as well that's correct and that there are some students actually in this current cohort if i remember correctly that had studied the online version abroad now they have a visa and they're here for the hands-on training part that's right. i was wondering if you could elaborate more about the online training and what that looks like and sure. if there's you know not all of our laughers are living in the greater Harrisonburg, Rockingham area. <laughs> we have listeners throughout all over the world. So talk to us about that. So we are one of few schools in the country uh, mm -hmm. that has an online program. Uh, it was originally started for COVID and mm -hmm. then the FAA approved it and we kept it approved. We kept it going. Uh, so what that does, it offers students living uh, in areas not close to Harrisonburg. Mm -hmm. living in another country, another state, or maybe you are a mom or a dad or, you know, and you have a job or a kid mm -hmm. that you can't come to school right now. So you can do online. Mm -hmm. What you do with that is you do all your lecture classes online for your first year. And then after you complete all of those, you come in person for all your lab classes. 
um, that opens the door up to so many people that otherwise could not do this. We have we have had several students come in this program as online online, and they said, you know, I couldn't do this if it wasn't for that program. Hmm. Uh, we actually graduated a young lady this past term, and she was from Chicago. She moved to Richmond. Uh, mm-hmm. She actually took the class online in Richmond, and she moved here from Richmond last fall and stayed here and actually took her lab classes, and she graduated. She passed her tests. Wow. She's an FAA mechanic right now, and she actually has a job working for an airline close to here. So she's doing great. That's amazing. Yeah. What kinds of challenges do you find you have with the distance learning portion of the program? Well, obviously, it's, you know, the burden of technology, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about it, laughers. <laughs> we, um, I keep learning. <laughs> there's a lot of our students, you know, face the, um, the uh, problems of not having good internet, you know, mm. maybe, uh, or not having access to what they need uh, to get good internet, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for us, the challenge is, you know, learning a program like this online can be a challenge mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of it is self-paced we do help our students as much as we can we actually log on do live lectures and stuff like that uh but you can only do so much at home in your bedroom or kitchen or wherever you're at mm-hmm. and so um i would say the learning curve for online is a little uh longer than it mm-hmm. is for the guys coming in person here mm-hmm. um so for me i guess that would be the biggest challenge to overcome is learning how to learn your lecture, read the material, follow instructions online, and get all that taken care of before you come here. So you have to be a disciplined person, and you got to have the technology to make sure that you can accomplish all that while you're doing it. So, Ethan, I want to ask you, what has it meant for you to have all this practical hands-on training? Because you're in your second year now. Well, can you talk about the benefits and maybe some surprising benefits from the hands-on training you've had? So that was one of the big things that got me in on this class was Mm -hmm. the availability of working on real airplanes Mm. Uh, because you get very practical knowledge of how these airplanes work. You can go out to one of the airplanes if you need to figure out what this what this certain system looks like. Mm -hmm. We have they have a wide variety of airplanes out here Mm -hmm. uh, that you can pretty much find any of the systems that we discuss in class on these airplanes. I see. Okay. So you get a hands-on look into how these systems work and how they function in the real world. And then also, of course, these are, these are old airplanes and they break. So if something is broken or not working right, you get hands-on experience fixing that exact problem. Mm. That's great. What kinds of hands-on uh, equipment are they working on behind us? Can you talk about that? You know, it's, some of it may be off camera the, right now. Have to see what they're doing. So right now they are working yeah. on uh, they're working on simulated projects for aerodynamics and gas laws. Uh, mm-hmm. So they are going through simulations of what happens when you add pressure. Okay. to a liquid what happens when you make it hotter or colder you know? i got it and they're working on what happens when you add air over an airfoil what happens when you actually change the direction of the airfoil or the shape of the airfoil the air what um? the airfoil <laughs> the airfoil <laughs> thank you yep is the um is what well, just to kind of lay it down a little bit it's it's the direction that the air flows over the wing so the wing is oh. the airfoil so the shape of the wing is the airfoil and the air going over the wing or the leading edge of the wing rather uh will dictate a lot so Got how much it. air you have how much pressure everything we're learning today laughers we are learning so much speaking of learning you've got capstone classes the amt 227 that's airframe inspections and the amt 245 which is power plant inspections what is the important what are, what are they first of all <laughs> and what is the importance of those capstone classes in your curriculum sure um well like the uh, the uh, capstone classes are obviously exactly what they are they're the end of the program mm-hmm. um those classes basically encompass everything that the student has learned the entire time they're here okay uh, but what we also do is we will give them um practical and oral 
exam tests during those classes. So they're basically performing inspections on the airframe and the power plants, power plant or power plants of an aircraft. And that's what you would do in the field as an AMP. So you would do that kind of work. At the same time they're doing that, we actually give them uh, a mock-up uh, practice FAA full exam that they would have if they would take their FAA exams. So we give them multiple practicals and multiple orals. We give them a long oral like they would have when they actually take the test. Mm -hmm. So we try to not only prepare the student to take the FAA exams, yeah. uh, but we also uh, help them learn how to do inspections, how to look for items, how to actually troubleshoot items if they find something. And they'll make up a discrepancy of the item and describe to us, okay, how would you fix it? This is what you found, you know, So, but how would you fix it? All right. So burning question for me as someone who's probably not going to become an airplane mechanic. <laughs> not sure I'm going to become a pilot, but I'm definitely going to take another flight to go somewhere. So there's probably a lot of laughers that are wondering, where is the airframe? in the plane that they're sitting in where is this power plant on the airplane that they're sitting in so say i'm in coach what's the airframe where's okay. the power plant so when you're sitting in coach you are yeah. sitting in the airframe that is the fuselage of the aircraft thank if you if you look out the window whichever side you're on and you teach your head back wherever you can see the power plant which is the engines of the aircraft so if you're on a 737 nice. or whatever they have them you know hanging on the side of the wings Okay. There's a lot of pieces to the airframe, right? There's a lot. There's a lot to an airplane in general. Yeah. There's a lot of things that um, you would not normally think about. So, Like what? Do you have a couple examples? Magnetos, which help start the engine. Uh, you have carburetors, fuel injection mm -hmm. systems, electrical systems, radar units, on and on and on. There's a lot of different things in aircraft. And all of those items uh, can only be repaired. Uh, well, most of them can be repaired by an AMP mechanic. Hmm. And there's teams of mechanics at airlines Absolutely. that take care of this. Absolutely, yep. How, how, many work, how many airplane mechanics work on an aircraft when it stops and does maintenance? So if you're talking about airlines, there's, yeah. there's hundreds. Yeah. So any, any given night in an airline maintenance shop, there could be hundreds of mechanics working on aircraft, multiple aircraft. Yeah. So, yeah. What's the most common thing that people maintenance on airplanes when it, you know, stops and then we're waiting for the next crew of people to come on that airplane? What's the most common task or so, tasks? So usually when you're, like when you're pulling up to the gate and you're yeah. whatever, getting out of the aircraft, a lot of times maintenance crews are good on and just you check the whole aircraft up, make sure everything is safe and there's nothing broken. If something has happened in the, in the flight to your destination, like the captain's will would use to make a squawk list or like a discrepancy list and say this actually showed up will you check it out and use mm -hmm. the maintenance department will and they'll check it out and say it's good or it's not or whatever um the common things on aircraft is basically just just actually keeping the aircraft um in a flying condition making sure it's safe now when the aircraft is down for longer periods of maintenance they actually dis you know it's it's just a massive thing they take the airplane apart put it back together basically there's a lot of stuff that goes on during the heavy checks on larger aircraft the heavy checks. The heavy checks. There's light checks and heavy checks, Absolutely. I take it. Yeah. There's a lot to this. What are the additional mission requirements for your program? Uh, so, in order to uh, get into the program, uh, mm -hmm. you have to um, you have to take a math prerequisite. Okay. Uh, you have to apply for the program and you know, get accepted to the program, which, which is not hard to do. Um, and once you meet the requirements of the program, having a math and applying, you have to take a drug test. You have to take a background check that gets you a TSA badge mm -hmm. so you can operate here on the field. Um, once you pass all those and get those, then you're in the program and you start classes. Um, our classes here run, we have a one-year program and we have a two-year program. Okay. Uh, we run from August to August every year. We go 12 months a year, five days a week. Um, so we always have students. There are guys, you know. There are days and weeks we don't have students because of breaks, whatever. But, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just apply to the program. Once you meet the prerequisites of, of, of us and the college, uh, then you sign up and you're in. We do have a, um, we have a cap limit. So once we reach that cap limit on our students, we have to cap it off and mm -hmm. you know, have like a waiting list. Um, and this is the first year in a long time that we've actually had a waiting list. Oh, wow. So, 
How, what is the cap for the program? The cap is uh, 25, okay. we, but we can do 25 students per instructor in the lab. We can do as many as we can hold and lecture, which really isn't much more over 25. Yeah, uh, it is a smaller classroom. It is a smaller classroom. But that's uh, more personalized attention, I would imagine. It really is. And, you know, we can do more here, mm-hmm. but we choose not to because, you know, we want to have, just like you said, we want to have the personalized attention to students. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once we, um, if, if we would ever expand later in the future, uh, then we would bring on more instructors and stuff like that that can that can still offer their personalized attention to detail to our students that we want to offer. So, Ethan, what would you say is the hardest part of doing this program? <laughs> and I understand that probably varies per student, but for you personally, what is that? Probably the most. I won't go with the, the most nerve wracking for me is <laughs> fair. <laughs> the most nerve wracking for me is oral exams. By far. Uh, uh, that's that's one thing. If, if I can sit in front of a book and study questions, uh, but oral exams really they they make they make me nervous. Uh, I think that's fair. I had my graduate degree program not in airplane mechanics <laughs> but we had to do it oral i felt it was nerve-wracking too i hear you yeah yeah and what well, and that's the other thing that's great about this program is even though oral exams make me nervous we have one after every class so when it comes time for the final oral exam it'll i will hopefully not feel near as nervous as i would if i would have only done one or two oral exams per year yeah, and what what do you what surprised you that was maybe easier for you? What, what was easier for you in taking this program that may have surprised you? So easier things for me tend to be hands on okay. stuff. So uh, a lot of the practical practical tests mm-hmm. for each class, uh, I tend I feel like I tend to find those a lot easier. And then written tests, I uh, don't really have a problem with. Uh, but the practicals are the most fun for me. There's a few. There's one or two. There's a couple practical exams that get pretty, <laughs> Harry. pretty tough. <laughs> okay. But, but oh, it, yeah. it's, it's a great way to get your hands on and learn how to do stuff in the real world. Okay. What kinds of, what kinds of tools do the students have available to them here overall throughout the Shenandoah Valley Airport to complete this program? What access to equipment do they have? Yeah. Um, so as far as tools go, we, we do require our students to own their own tools and buy their tools. Um, our thinking behind that is that when a student completes this program, completes this program they are ready to go to work we mm. have to get whatever so we actually base our tools off of what the airlines are requiring as far as the tools that we have we update and modernize our uh, tool inventory and equipment uh, as often as we can uh, we have some of the cutting edge um, uh, you know training systems available right now mm-hmm. uh, we're working on getting more in uh, so we're always updating and modernizing our program uh, we're in the process right now of uh, getting some newer equipment uh, to actually modernize us a little further along, uh, but we are always buying tools and equipment. We have the, we have most of our tool inventory are from Snap On. Um, okay. And we have a lot of other um, training systems that we use as far as like you know we have um, training boards, mock boards. I don't know if you can see any behind me, but we mm-hmm. have fire systems and different things like that, that we actually train on. Um, so yeah, yeah, we keep it. You know, um, we keep our inventory stocked. Ethan, as a student, can you talk to us about the tools that you have invested in for this program and an approximate range of cost for them? Just for, for those laughers that might be interested or knows, have a family member or friend who might be interested in doing this. Yes, so uh, they give you a list at the start of the year of all the tools that you're required to have for the class. Uh, of course, it's going to be the basics, uh, socket set, ratchets, um, pliers, wrenches, uh, screwdrivers, and then a couple of specialty tools, uh, safety wire pliers, which are pliers to 
safety wire bolts to keep him from backing out. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, so a really important part of working Keeping on the plane together. making sure that <laughs> stuff gets held together. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and then some other specialty tools. Um, I'm just trying to think right now off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. I spent... It, it it can vary for per student how much sure. how much how high of quality of tools or how mm-hmm. brand name of tool what brand name of tools you want to get. Right. I built my own set and I think all told have to think on it a little bit, but I think it cost me around two thousand to two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. And that was toolbox and all of my tools. Uh, however, I do know there is multiple companies that offer completes aviation toolbox sets okay yeah that makes sense students. yeah uh, they are a bit more expensive but they are a complete set you don't have to worry about parting about finding all your own tools you can just buy, buy a kit run. yeah and is that expected to is it something you invest over your two years or did you invest in that up front before you started taking the hands-on part of the class so they want you to have your tools at the start of the year. Okay. Uh, but so the, you know this going in as you're reading about the program and applying, you're getting the information, hey, you need your own tools. So it's not like you do it overnight. Like it's not a surprise. Is it a surprise, the investment in your tools? or? I expected that I was going to have to. I figured as much. Yeah. Spend about that much. And get, mm-hmm. I, I, I really want, I wanted to have the tools anyway. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was it, it was not what sense. I expected. Okay. That and is the do you guys sell tools at the through the school at all, or do you have a referral program or anything like that for tools? We do not sell tools. Okay. Um, but we have a relationship with all the tool manufacturers. Um, students can get you Snap On, Mac, Medco, on and on, with actually hefty discounts. Uh, so, That's good. And there's a lot of tool manufacturers that will even give them like half off with 30% off of tools. That's so great. So we encourage our students to purchase our tools while they're in school because you get the discounts now that you would never get ever again. I and see. so students kind of, they pay um, the cost that students would spend on tools vary from student to student. Mm-hmm. And then we have some students that spend five grand on tools who buy like a whole set. And we'll have students that spend 2500 bucks on tools. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's really it depends on what the student wants individually and the tool you know brand and manufacturer they go with. So, um, and you know, you don't have you know, yes, we do require all the tools when they begin, um, but you know, there's a little bit of uh, you know leniency right there starting out because there's some tools yeah. that they won't need until springtime or something like that. But but usually, generally by the uh, middle of the first semester, you know, we. Have a majority of them in by then. That's right. Do you have any scholarships or internships available Uh, for prospective students? And if so, how do they get that information? Yeah, so there's actually a ton of scholarships out there for new students who wants to become an aircraft mechanic. Um, We have several local scholarships. We have a scholarship through Dynamic Aviation. Uh, we have a scholarship through the Virginia Space Grant Consortium that they give scholarships oh, out. Oh, that's great. Um, I believe that the Virginia Department of Aviation is coming out with a newer scholarship. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are a woman that's wanting to become an aircraft mechanic, there is money out there for women student mechanics. Uh, that's there's, great. Yep, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of scholarship money that's available to students. Not not only that, there's actually grants and stuff like that. As far as internships, um, you know, locally there uh, there are a couple companies that sometimes offer internships. Uh, Dynamic Aviation is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they offer that. Uh, Classic Aviation has offered some internships to our students before. Um, so we do have that, you know. I like that. Yep. And um, uh, But, uh, you know, I want to go back on the women aspect mm-hmm. there's actually we are seeing more and more women getting into this industry and so we that's have, good that's very good we have had some um we had four women in our, our program last year and they were phenomenal they were great um and uh and they you know i know one of these ladies received a lot of grant money uh and so um don't think that 
you know, you can't afford this program because mm-hmm. there's money out there and there's ways that we can help you afford this program. I really like that. Yeah. You've been in this industry for 20 years. You're just now getting into it. But we all see that technology is <laughs> rapidly advancing. <laughs> so how has that advancement in technology impacted the way you teach and maintain aircraft? I love that question. That's a great question. I think so, too. Yeah. I'm so curious about the answer. <laughs> yeah. um, technology changes all the time. And this yeah. industry evolves all the time. You mm-hmm. know, Even from five years ago, this, this maintenance industry and the aviation industry has evolved and changed. And we are mm-hmm. on the horizon of having supersonic flight back in, in the industry. Okay, let's back up just a minute okay. for people who have never heard what supersonic flight is. They might have an idea, so, but we got an expert here, so break it down. <laughs> uh, so supersonic flight is basically getting from point A to point B uh, much quicker. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if it takes you X amount of hours to fly from New York to London, then it'll uh, take you less than X amount of hours to fly. Like from half the time? Half the time, maybe less. And so, if you remember back in the way, uh, back in the days of the Concorde, yeah. you know, that was a revolutionary aircraft. Well, there's manufacturers or a manufacturer that's on the horizon right now that is getting ready to bring supersonic flight maybe back into the, the, uh, the world. And so if and when that happens, uh, then the game changes, you know, it's all new. Uh, You have manufacturers right now that are creating electric air taxis that would get you from this little city to this little city to to actually go to the airport or something. And so um, electric taxis, electric air taxis, which is basically electric aircraft that would get you from a smaller destination, you know, to get to your airport. You can hop Are off these there. airport Ubers? <laughs> airport Ubers, you can look at them as that. That's what you can look at. You, you can actually think of them as an airport Uber, yes. And, uh, That's crazy. And there's just so much. I mean, there's so many things on the horizon now. It's just unbelievable, mind-boggling. And, uh, um, and then to keep up with the technology, guess what? You need technicians to fix it. And so the technicians are going to have to be uh, trained in a wider area of a lot of areas of this industry. So that's why that I tell people that it's not only working on aircraft anymore, it's going over to the aerospace industry. There's rockets, there's, you know, all kinds of stuff that you can do now. SpaceX hires a lot of AMP mechanics and they hire mechanics out of school. That's what they mm-hmm. do. Lockheed Martin, all these companies hire, they never used to hire new mechanics out of school. Now they do that because they're looking for the, per- the freshest for the next knowledge. Person. And who knows, you know, right. you may be the next person to build the next you know super secret you know top secret bird for like who knows who knows right the next stealth the next stealth what would you say is the most mind-boggling technology coming down the pike for aviation that you are aware of that made you go whoa that's going to be crazy (laughs) well i mean you know like it's out now but if you look at the drone technology that we have today it is unbelievable um i watched a drone show not too long ago and there were hundreds of drones in the sky that was making designs and shapes and patterns and they were controlled by a computer you know if you would have even that would even imagined you know 10 years ago Mm-hmm. So if you would even think about that, they wouldn't even in thought. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, you know, you see like that. It's just great. I mean, you, you can go and buy you know, like a small drone and fly it around your house to take videos of your home and road and street and everything else. And it's kind of cool. Minority Report is coming. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? Minority <laughs> Oh, hold on to your hats, laughers. We're in for a ride with this future. Uh, what advice would each of you give to someone entering this field? Let's start with you, Ethan. Your, your fresh second year, what advice would you give them? So, first thing I would say is be interested in aviation. That is, I love that advice. That is, that is something that has helped me as much as anything. Mm-hmm. Just being involved, being interested, and in loving airplanes. Uh, and uh, the other thing is, I mean, you don't, for this class, you do not have to have any prior knowledge whatsoever of mechanics, like how, how an engine works, mm-hmm. how an airplane works. There was a couple students last year that 
came into the class with absolutely no knowledge of completely half cold of the tools yeah in their okay. toolbox and Kevin I think one of them or both of them are or who how many ever it was they are passed they are they are full mechanics right now that's wonderful yeah yeah what advice would you give Kevin so I'd say the best advice I can give someone is you got to want it Mm -hmm. you know, when you come to this program, you really got to want to do it. Um, it. It is a very challenging industry. It's not always, you know, easy. You have to work in weather all the time and stuff like that. Rain, snow, heat, cold, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the big thing is, is just like he said, is you got to have a, you know, you want to want to do aviation. You, know, mm -hmm. you want to have a little bit of an interest or like for it. And even just a little bit. I mean, you don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. Um, but one of the other big advice I give somebody is to um, have an open mind, you know, and come into a program like this with the open mind that you're going to learn the material mm -hmm. and you're in it for the long haul, you know, because uh, it's really not something that you just kind of do and throw away. I mean, this is I don't look at what I've ever done in this industry as a job. I look at it, look at it as a lifestyle. I met some of the most amazing people that I've met has been in this industry and this industry has been really good to me mm -hmm. um, I've met some amazing people in this I have had some amazing rides and experiences in this industry and, I'm sure <laughs> and it, it has been fantastic and um, and so you know you really can't say that about a lot of things you do in life and I look at this as a lifestyle and not really a job it's it's not a career yes it is but it's not and so the main thing I can say is want it want it yeah You've done this for a while. What are some memorable success stories of some of the students that have come through? Uh, well, I will revert back to last year. Okay. Um, and I will speak a little bit about what you talked about. Is um, We had a lady come through that, um, um, uh, you know, came from a professional background. And mm -hmm. she came in here with no knowledge of what is a tool, basically. What's a screwdriver? She knew what a screwdriver was. That's where my knowledge is now, yeah. laughers. Yeah. <laughs> but she came in here not knowing any of that. Yeah. And by the spring semester, the spring, she was making sheet metal structures. Wow. She was riveting, and she did a fantastic job. And she recently passed her exams. Oh, yay. And she, you know, and she now is an AMP mechanic. And she has the opportunity to work anywhere she wants to. She actually has some job offers. All of our students who actually graduate the program, um, you know, has multiple job offers before they graduate the program. So anyone who actively seeks for employment, they find it immediately. So they mm -hmm. don't have to hang around and wait, you know. Um, but I would say that one. And then another memorable student is um, someone who came in that was a little nervous, who didn't really know anybody and I think they were really like a really shy person mm -hmm. and they came to me one day and said you know what I don't know if I can do this because I'm really shy and I feel awkward and I feel out of place and I said mm -hmm. you're not out of place you're actually part of good people and we're going to actually help you out and so um, you know he came in this program and he actually worked and worked hard and it took him a while but he became one of the best students that we had and wow. when he left the program, he said, you know, this actually taught me not only about how to fix aircraft and work on these things, but it taught me about life. It gave me the confidence to be successful as a person. And so... Um, That's beautiful. Yeah. And so, you yeah. know, there's there's a lot of things like that that happens within this program, other programs, and in the industry. Great people in this industry. Great people. That's great. And before we ask a closing question, I want to ask you, Ethan, what are you looking forward to the most after graduating from this program, what are you looking forward to the most? Probably the freedom to have my entire day back. <laughs> uh, That's fantastic. <laughs> it is. I love it's, the honesty. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's like going back to school. Yeah. And it, I, I'm, only where, I'm only here a half a day, which is nice. That, yeah. that really helps. But... Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to the back to the real world, as people say. Yeah, that's good. Well, I'm looking forward to following your success. So in the meantime, Kevin, can you tell us how the Laughers can best follow 
this program on social media otherwise website where are we at how can they get in touch with you sure absolutely um so we're in the process of actually redoing all of that so okay. it's all gonna be new uh so here maybe in the uh, next month or so all that will be all new and updated okay. but currently you can go to brcc.edu and yep. you can scroll and go to academics yep. go to programs and select transportation and logistics okay and our program is under that Okay. You can click on aviation maintenance uh, technology, and it has all of the information about our program, um, how to enroll, who to call. I think my number is there. My contact information is there, so so you can reach out to me. Uh, and I would be more than glad to give you a tour. I'd be more than glad to actually talk to you on the phone. Um, and we would love to have you a part of this program because I believe that we are um, that we have a great program here, and I believe that we're on the we are changing how we do things and we're upgrading the program we're growing and uh, clearly clearly yep and um, there are great things on the horizon let me just say that that's amazing well thank you so much for joining us today kevin and ethan this has been truly pleasurable talking about all things aviation mechanics program here at blue ridge community college which also involves the Shenandoah Valley Airport where we are right now. This has been super fun, super educational, and I appreciate both of you so much. So thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. You are it was great. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Yes, and laughers, to find out more information about what they have to offer, you can go to Blue Ridge Community College's website at brcc.edu and you go to academics and programs and then logistics and transportation and you will have all that information. Also, I will put that link and information in the show notes for you as well. And when all the updated information is happening, I'll go back in and put that in there too as well as Kevin Campbell's direct contact information. So you can take that tour, find out more, ask questions, whatever it is that you need to do. We're here to support you. And Laughers, again, thank you for tuning in today and spending your time with us. It truly means the world. We're not able to grow without you. It means so much. So please give this a like, share, tell a friend. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts and also now on YouTube housed on the Funny Womax channel. So you can find it there along with some other fun, funny stuff. <laughs> so also don't forget that discount on Preposterous using promo code LAUGH15 to save 15% on their absurdly flavorful popcorn today. Just visit Preposterous.com. That's P-R-E-P-O-P-S-T-E-R-O-U-S.com. And I will put that link in the show notes for you as well. And lastly, and most importantly, thanks for tuning in, laughers. Out of all the podcasts out there, you picked us and we think that's pretty darn special, just like you. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by the funny Womax and friends. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday. So check back for another uplifting episode. Come to a FWAF show or let us bring one to you. To find out more, head to the funny Be sure to share this podcast with a friend. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.